some of my colleagues bristle when I say that their disciplines are not science. But I say they should not. My whole argument is that science is not the only knowledge there is. Other scientific disciplines like history, literature, philosophy, sociology, jurisprudence, and religion possess real knowledge. It's just that it isn't scientific knowledge. And it's confusing if those disciplines seek promotional advantage by a terminological anachronism of being called science. So my position is that there are many vital areas of human knowledge that are inaccessible to science's methods of investigation. These cannot in any meaningful way be explained by science. It's not that they just currently haven't been explained. It's that they intrinsically are incapable of being explained on a scientific basis because they don't possess the characteristics of reproducibility and clarity upon which science are, um, relies. The other th important thing about science is that it, it isn't absolute in the sense that one of the really important things in science, and I think it's one of the things that gets us into trouble because it's often underrepresented, is that when we present a scientific result, it's about what we know, but it's also about stating precisely what we don't know. Uncertainty is very much a part of science, and it's given a bad name in the, in, in sort of the press, and I think that's what gets us into trouble so often, that if anything turns out to be to overturned or to not be true for everything, but that is the nature of science. The nature of science is that we measure something in a given domain. We don't make absolute measurements. No one has an infinite power to make an infinite measurement over all domains. We make a measurement and we know over what regime it applies. We also know where we haven't made a measurement. And so that is interesting because that leaves room for advancement. It could be that our theory is true up to a point. It could be that there are corrections to it. It could be that there are new theories that underlie it. And that is very much in the nature of the way we think about particle physics. We know, for example, today the standard model of particle physics, describing matter's most basic elements and interactions as we know them. But we're looking for what lies beyond. So it's important to recognize that we've only measured things up to certain energies over a certain range of distances.